Okay. Hi, Oliver. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? Doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. Nice to have Absolutely. you with us. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, my pleasure. So you've got a book called Fitness Over 40. I see the cover behind you there. Is this a fairly yes. new release or has it been out for a while? You know, during the time of COVID, so COVID being, you know, our lockdown, um, I had this book ruined in my head maybe two years prior. Uh, two years prior, and I just knew I had to get it down. And I just decided during COVID, since it was a lockdown, I was doing a lot of virtual training. Um, I took that time to just write every day, uh, which was great for me and just kind of get all my thoughts onto a paper. And uh, so about three years now, about three and a half years, uh, I wrote it. You wrote it three and a half years ago. Did you release it that long ago? Yes, I released it. I put it on Amazon. Um, but primarily it was a message for my current members uh, that I was training, personal training. Uh, who are primarily 55 years plus. Uh, I wrote it for them so they can know my story and so they can understand why, uh, why, I write, why I train the way that I train and why I'm writing this book. Okay, so you are a personal trainer. Is that what you do for a living? Yes, 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 I am. And most of your clients are over 55? Yes, you know, primarily female. They're about uh, 80, we have about 80% female at our studio um over 55 um they're becoming empty nesters which is pretty cool because now i'm writing now to empty nesters and what they're going through and you know empty nesters as you may or may not know is they take they've taken so many years taking care of other people and now they're realizing mid 50s early 60s they need to take care of themselves uh, and so then i touch those points in the book as well it's like how do you take care of yourself uh, after taking somebody, taking care of somebody else for so many years, you know? Okay, you called it a studio. Is it a gym or a studio? Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a, well, I, I guess it's both, right? Uh, it is a studio. We have a 2,000 square foot facility. Uh, we do primarily one on ones, and we also do uh, small group training for adults over 40. Okay, but you have gym equipment and stuff? Yes, that, yeah. yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, because when I when you said studio, I was picturing a giant empty room like a dance studio with a big mirror and yoga mats on the floor, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is where the fitness industry is going, right? General population kind of thinks of gyms or studios like that, like just what you described, just blank canvas, mirrors, and that's about it. Uh, our facility and what the industry is becoming. You walk into the door. We primary we do like physical therapy as well. We have physical therapy experience as an aid. Uh, there's a physical therapist, Dr. Alan Lee, who rents space from us. But that first section, about forty percent of our studio, is you know the wooden floor, mirrors. We have a cable machine. Um, you know, there's some space you know for people to sit. But that space is teaching people how to move properly if they're injured, coming out of surgery. We want to do that kind of stuff in this room, the first room. The second half is what people think of what a real gym is. Turf, kettlebells, dumbbells, squat racks. So we kind of uh, compartmentalize that. And then that's where we primarily do our small group training with a group of adults uh, in that side. Oh, I see. So you've got physical therapy and gym at the same time, basically. Correct. Yeah. It's uh, oh, that's good. It's the blend. Yeah, the the gray area. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but when people come out of physical therapy, they're in this gray area. The physical therapist says, "Hey, you need to go work your core or get stronger," but they don't know how to do that. Plus, they're scared and anxious of injuring themselves again. Uh, so we position our trainers and ourselves in this business to be in that gray area with them, to guide them, kind of show them where they need to go, but also go at their own speed and give them that, that uh, care uh, in strength training. Well, the one thing I like is that you have a large clientele that's over 55. That would encourage me because yeah. I'm not a gym person, but I especially would not want to go to a gym where it's all 20-year-old beautiful buff people. 
I would exactly. feel horribly insecure and uncomfortable in a place like that. If I go to a place and <laughs> and it's a bunch of fat middle-aged white guys like me, I feel all right, <laughs> you know. But to, to you know what I'm saying? It's like I would feel more comfortable in a place where it's people my own age, my own For sure. condition, uh, mm -hmm. going at a slower pace, right? We laugh about it, right? You talk, you say it out loud, it's like kind of funny. But if you kind of slow that down and you, my job as the owner and to talk to people as they initial, during the initial console, you know, I need to be empathetic. I need to see, okay, What's your true why? Why do you want to start this new fitness journey? Because it's not easy, right? It's like the hero's journey. It looks like a great idea, but then you go down and then you're like going through some real challenges, mostly mental because they're scared, they're anxious, they're unsure, they, you know, they're self-conscious, right? Just like you said, right. uh, most, people, most people need that guidance or that somebody there for them uh, to care and kind of say, hey, you're there we're going to meet you where you are let's get you out of this you know dark area and uns of uncertainty and let's kind of get you over here where it's where you can become stronger you can have better posture uh, you'll have more energy throughout the day those types of feelings are uh, totally obtainable uh, but they do come in anxious and scared a lot of the times yeah absolutely did you see the movie dodgeball Yes, you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Well, see, I feel more comfortable going to Average Joe's, Average Joe's. than to the yeah. other one, yeah. So when you were talking about that, that was the picture going through my head. Was it, yeah, yeah. I'm fine at Average I started, Joe's. <laughs> I started at the big box gym, absolutely. A lot of trainers do uh, to get experience, to find their voice in training and kind of teach their eye, like coach their own trainer's eye. Um, but then after that big box, like the 24 hour or uh, the equinoxes of today, uh, they trainers soon kind of merge into their own business because uh, they really truly care for the for the member. They build a strong relationship with them and then they eventually find out, man, that's just a big corporation. Uh, now it's time to really just build a relationship and build you know, one on one outside of that big box gym. Uh, so that is a timeline, the average Joe or the big box to the average Joe's. Right. Um, yeah. Was there something that happened in your life early on that made you want to do this? Something that inspired yeah. you? Yes, absolutely. There's always that one thing uh, in people's lives. And for me, uh, it was a lower back or lumbar area. Just I was it all started when I was uh, probably in middle school. Um, I hurt my back really bad in Taekwondo. Uh, someone did a backbreaker on me. Like if you think about WWF. Oh. Someone, yeah. And I was young and this guy was bigger and, a, you know, a, a stronger belt in, in Taekwondo. So uh, he did a backbreaker on me. And even as I say it right now, I can still sense it, feel it like in my core viscerally. Uh, but that's when it started. And then I started to wrestle in high school, played a lot of basketball in college. Um, and during college, there were times where I was just laying on the floor, unable to move uh, just because of my lower back injury. And it was a disc bulge. It was like a four to six millimeter disc bulge. And I missed events. I missed uh, my college events. I missed birthdays. I missed family events. And one time when I was on the couch, Actually, I was on the floor, icing my back with my feet elevated on the couch. You can picture that. I made a distinct decision in my life to help other people because that pain when you're on your back, unable to move, just incapacitated, you're vulnerable. Um, I wanted to help people because that was a feeling that I just didn't want to do anymore or feel anymore. Um, and during my college years, I made that decision. And uh, it's been it's been growing and evolving ever since into this industry. How long did it take you to fully recover from that injury? Um, I would say right now, so right now I'm 42 years old. Um, I, once I feel any kind of tweak, right? Cause I still work out, I'm still active. 
Uh, but once I feel a tweak in my lower back, I don't get anxious. I don't get, you know, like, oh, no, my back is going to go out anymore. I don't get scared. I know strategies now as to what to do, how to heal it properly. Um, so I would say 10 years plus. Oh, I'm wow. pretty solid. Yeah. yeah, in my lower back. I mean, if you can imagine uh, my wife now, uh, girlfriend back then, I was like in my late 20s, getting out of the car and just making sure that I was trying to not fall because I and she was running into the urgent care, brought back a walker for me, and I had to use a walker to get into urgent care. Like that's how bad it was um, in my late 20s. So now that I'm in my 40s, other things are popping up, neck issues, ankle issues. Um, but do you I, think I mean, that, I digress. No, but do you think the other, you said neck and ankle, do you think that's all related to the original injury? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's our, our job as trainers um, to connect the dots, right? If you had an ankle injury, how does that affect your gait or how you walk? Uh, how does that walking compensate and overcompensate and bring impact into your lower back? And how do you kind of shift your whole side shoulder into your neck and head because your head as you walk you're always going to walk and look at the horizon right we're not like walking down we're always trying to look up at where we're going and so all of that because we're constantly fighting gravity um, and so that overcompensation keeps adding and adding layers and layers to injuries uh, but that's what we do that's our job and to make people feel stronger in fixing that for them We've got just a couple of minutes and I just want to go back to your book. So what is the book? Is it um, a how to or is it more about your story, your autobiography or how's it set up? It's a little bit about me and my story as to why I started training. Uh, so that's like the first quarter, uh, my back injury, what motivated me and inspired me. And then it's also into our philosophy. So my company Thrive Training. Uh, we have philosophies, basically pillars as to how we train, right? And they're basically laws that I've uh, brought into like physics. So there's three dimensional, you know, sagittal, frontal, and transverse. We can't just train in one plane of motion. So I break that down into the book. Um, different movement patterns, what we call is the big eight. The big eight is eight fundamental moves of our body. Master eight moves, everything else is cherry on top, weight loss, toning of the arms and the stomach. Um, and the book goes deep into the blueprint of how we should work out. Not all these fancy things that you see on YouTube and Instagram, rather fundamental movements that we need to learn how to do uh, just become stronger as we age. Because for me, I don't know about you, Douglas, but for me, my goal is to when I get into my 60s, 70s and 80s and 90s, I want to be able to be active and pick up my kids, my grandkids um, and great grandkids and not be scared of throwing out my back. That's my goal. Uh, so that's what the book is all about, is teaching how to do that. Well, I may have to take a look at it because at this point, you know, just getting out of bed without pain is good for me. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm happy when that and I can get out and go, oh, yeah, that feels good. OK. It's a small win. Absolutely. Yeah, you, gotta, it is. you have to let, double down on that, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, Oliver, we got to wind this down. Thanks so much for coming on the show. The book is called Fitness Over 40. Uh, do you have a website you want to give out? Yes, it's thrivetrainingirvine.com. Thrivetrainingirvine.com. Okay. Again, thanks for coming on the show. Nice meeting you. Best of luck with your work and with your book. Thank you so much, Douglas, for the opportunity.